Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be relating rotational variables and translational variables or tangential variables. So things moving around in a circle in a radian based sense versus things that are moving from left to right, for instance. So I'm going to talk you through these ideas of tangential speed or tangential velocity, tangential acceleration, centripetal acceleration using radian based units, or centripetal acceleration with these variables here. So you're going to become more familiar with these variables here. And so this is geared towards a physics class or the basis for an AP physics class as well. I want to ask you, if you take a look at the horse in the foreground right here, if it's moving to the left, is it going to be faster than the horse that's in the background as this thing moves to the left as well? What do you think? Well, you already intuitively know that the horse in the foreground here is going to be moving faster in a translational or a tangential sense from right to left it's going to be moving faster and the horse in the background is going to be moving slower even though they are turning at the same angular speed or angular velocity. So in a circular sense, what's different about these two horses then in terms of their location from the center of the circle? Well, this horse out here on the outside is going to have a greater radius and the horse on the inside is going to have a lesser radius from the center of the circle. And as a result, it's going to have a greater tangential speed. It's going to be moving from right to left faster. This one in the background is going to be moving slower from right to left. So you already intuitively know some of this. I do want to talk about this. Just an overhead view of what we're talking about. This is tangential speed here. So we're going to say that tangential speed is equal to the radius times the angular speed. And this is what I was talking about a moment ago, where the radius changes the tangential speed, but also the angular speed matters. If this thing is going slower when it starts out, and later at some time it has a faster angular speed, then of course it would have a greater tangential speed. So this is a really crucial equation, partially because it relates linear quantities, like this tangential speed over here, and angular quantities, or radian-based quantities over here, like this angular speed. So it is actually really crucial for regular physics classes as well as for AP physics classes. All right, and let's take it one step further while going with speeds and transition to accelerations. So it turns out that this equation comes directly from this equation over here. By the way, if you're an AP Physics C Mechanics student, know that this is on your equation sheet, but this equation is not. But you should be able to come up with this equation based on this equation over here and some previous practice. So you get the idea that your tangential acceleration is equal to your radius times your angular acceleration. Let me explain what these things are. Tangential acceleration would be like if this thing is speeding up as it goes around in a circle. What would the acceleration be on the outside at a tangent to the circle? So if you imagine the merry-go-round starting from rest and getting faster, it would have a tangential acceleration on the outside. The radius, of course, is clear. The angular acceleration is going to be the rate at which this thing speeds up. It will be in units of radians per second squared. So every second, its angular speed speeds up by a certain amount. That's what it means. All right, let's go ahead and apply this in a problem, in a very simple problem. And it says, find the tangential acceleration of a carnival rider on a ride that has an angular acceleration of 0.6 radians per second squared and a radius of 7.5 meters from the center. All right, fair enough. What we're going to do is just write our equation that applies here, and we're going to go and plug in our values and solve for our unknown. It's really that easy because it's a pretty straightforward problem. All right, now one other thing, though, that we need to mention is the interplay between centripetal acceleration, which is that center-seeking acceleration over here, and tangential acceleration, because there's a special relationship between the two. If you're talking about a circle, this is always pointing towards the center of a circle, this centripetal acceleration, and tangential acceleration is always pointing at a tangent to the circle. So by definition, these accelerations are going to be at right angles to each other. So how could we solve for the net acceleration of these two accelerations here? Remember, acceleration is a vector, so how could we solve for that net acceleration? All right, well, you may not know how this works, but let me go ahead and show you. So we're going to use the head to tail method and we're going to solve for the overall total acceleration using the Pythagorean theorem after using the head to tail method of vector addition. And let's see a summary here of some of the equations that we've talked about here. So we're gonna say tangential speed is equal to the radius times angular speed. Tangential acceleration is equal to the radius times angular acceleration and centripetal acceleration is equal to radius times angular speed squared. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments down below, please let me know, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.